Alright guys, many of you asked me to do another video on Liver King. I made a video about him a year ago where I exposed him for using steroids. As if it wasn't obvious, but it actually wasn't obvious because there were people commenting on my videos saying that he's natural. <laughs> One month ago, he did admit it. And then this channel called The Food Theorist made a video about him. And I think raw meat in general, so it should be interesting. Well, this isn't the most delicious snack. It is as sure as hell nutrient. It's very interesting that he starts his video like this because that alone already exposes him as being fake because when I eat raw meat and uh, that's a testicle, I could never say that I would never even think or feel that because testicles do taste very good, except if you get it from a super unhealthy animal. But I've had testicles from many different animals and none of them have ever tasted bad. They actually always taste very delicious. I generally crave testicles, but this guy with this huge steroid gut is saying that it actually isn't uh, super appetizing or whatever. Snack. I'm gonna take a huge bite out of these testicles. Yeah, I'm gonna recommend that you not do that. Not because it's gross, but because it's dangerous. And I've got the science to back it up. Hello primals, welcome to Food Theory, the show that gives you the raw truth about raw food. Today we're talking about the Liver King, an influencer who showed up on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube just... Also, an interesting thing about Liver King, Liver King only got popular online because he paid for it. He paid Google, YouTube, and so on. Google and YouTube is the same thing. Just to promote him and also all of these other shows, podcasts that he went on, he paid all of these people to get on there. And that's usually what people who have money do to get uh, popular online. And uh, people like us who actually promote raw meat and a healthy lifestyle, of course, don't get to do this. Just over a year ago and has set the world on fire with his ancestral approach to living. Basically, his idea is that mankind, and specifically the dude part of mankind, have become scrawny little wimpy men. And that's making us primarily unhappy, leading to high rates of depression and anxiety in today's male... It's sort of true because, uh, for example, the lower your testosterone is, the unhappier you're going to be. But, uh, of course, the way to get testosterone is not to inject it. Youth. He broadcasts statistics about our chronic male depression. Somebody doesn't feel good. They can't get out of their house. They're depressed. I love my man. Do you want to take a picture? Yeah, let's take a picture. Yes, yes. The easiest, fastest way to change your life, start eating them. This right here is... And his claim is that there It's generally great that he promoted eating liver, of course, because it's essentially the healthiest food on earth. And he very, very likely got this idea from me. It's almost impossible that he didn't, because I was the only guy for many years who ever promoted eating raw liver online. And then he comes along, and now his whole fake uh, character collapsed. And not only do people not take him serious anymore, they actually discredit what he said now. This whole scam of his really just ruined the idea of eating liver now. There's only one path to quality of life and happiness, liver. If you want unlimited access to call It's true, you cannot be happy without eating liver. Yes, you cannot be truly happy and euphoric. It's essentially impossible. You would maybe be able to if you would eat all of the other organs. But to get that amount of nutrients any other way is going to be hard. Money, and if you want to find your queen, liver is That makes no sense at all. How is he connecting liver, which is natural, to money, which doesn't exist, and to cars, which are unnatural, as in man-made? <laughs> really funny. Really reminds me of Andrew Tate, because again, he's trying to scam people, essentially. He's somehow trying to connect these two things which in no way go together. But he understands that slaves want all of these man-made objects and things that don't exist, which is why it, of course, appeals to them. He was very much, and I guess still is, I don't know what he's doing now, appealing to slaves and losers, and uh, it works. That's right, that organ that you systematically destroyed for four years at your frat house in college, that is the most important organ for your ongoing happiness. But I should probably clarify... Well, he destroyed his liver now with the drugs more than ever. It's not your liver that's the important one. It's cow's liver. Old Bessie over there in the corner shaking in her hooves. According to the Liver King, you need to be carving her up, grabbing as many internal organs as you can get your hands on, and you need to be eating them raw. Also, you should throw... The best organs you can possibly eat are from wild animals. Certainly not uh, some cows. Even if they are grass-fed, it still doesn't compare to wild animals. Throw in some eggs. Raw! And some bone marrow. Raw! And some strawberries! Strawberries! Uh, just kidding, strawberries are not part of the Liver King diet. This is a real guy, and yes, this is his quote-unquote diet. It's no one... 
This is not even true because in the video that I reviewed a year ago, he was mostly eating uh, burger patties, completely cooked to death, and then a little bit of raw meat. And then all of a sudden, a month later, there were videos saying that he only eats raw meat, which is nonsense. He always ate uh, over 90% cooked meat and uh, potatoes, <laughs> like an absolute slave, and then uh, some very little raw meat, just for his image, because it was a scam. I wonder that this guy's been able to catch the attention of every dude bro podcaster from Joe Rogan to Logan Paul. And any other broadcaster with Ogin as a... That only works with money. Slaves connect with money. That's why he got to talk to these people. It's the only reason. Part of their name. It's also been covered by the internet commentary channels and tons and tons of fitness professionals. And who can blame them when they're covering a guy whose content involves eating raw meat, getting 2,000 pounds of ice delivered to him so he can spend the afternoon chilling in a 36 degree... Again, also absolute slavery. Your body's immune system is completely going to collapse if you expose yourself to any kind of cold. You should always wear a lot of clothes in winter. And most certainly if you go into an ice bath, He's basically just as stupid as Wim Hof. He probably got this idea from him, who is really one of the unhealthiest guys on earth. The ice bath? More! To let the sun shine where the sun don't normally shine. It's on your balls. It does improve androgens. I think it's pretty primal. This guy is... That is very true, actually. It's just a walking billboard that says, make content about me. The question is, though, how much of this is bunk? Should you be doing anything that he recommends? Should you be spooning yourself bone marrow like it's a jello jiggler and munching down on internal organs walking dead style? Is there scientific evidence to support Liver King's idea that a diet of raw meat gives you a health boost? Or there has generally never been any study done on uh, raw meat, health benefits, or anything like that because the scientific community generally does not promote or really even consider raw meat as being a part of a human being's diet. Uh, there's a plant-based agenda and that's what they follow, which is why you will probably never see any studies, any science actually done on raw meat, especially raw organ consumption. And I know this because I've researched this topic for super many years. I've been eating raw meat for almost seven years. An evolutionary advantage over a typical diet. As someone who isn't a doctor, my answer is I'm not a doctor and offer no medical advice whatsoever. As someone on the internet who researches weird food stuff though, heck yes, we said we're going to debunk this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, get ready to talk liver. The Liver King's diet is only a part of a whole lifestyle system that he calls the nine ancestral tenants, which are designed to bring you back to the way your ancestors lived. Cold, starving, and riddled with parasites. Uh, wait, sorry, I, I mean powerful, strong, and dominant over all other life on the planet. If they were so sick, then how would humans exist today? Then everybody would have already died. <laughs> of course, they were way healthier than us today. The thing is, outside of the diet, many of these tenants are hard to argue with, mostly because they're basically common sense. Take the very first one on his website. Sleep. Get a lot of sleep. Great. Really shaking up the system with that one. Turn off your phone at least 30 minutes before bed. Actually, he is because uh, people don't sleep enough nowadays. The thing is that because of how much he works out and the amount of drugs he uses, he has to sleep a lot, which is why he emphasizes sleep. He most likely sleeps 13 to 14 hours a day. Move, which recommends shock of all shocks, take a long walk outside. Bond, spend time with people that you love and support. Sun, go outside. Even the ones that feel slightly less orthodox, like walking barefoot outside to connect with the ground, or doing cold plunges to improve your circulation. Sure, they may be less common in- <laughs> Cold plunges, and the cold in general, literally tightens your arteries, for example, and uh, yeah, your circulation in the body. <laughs> <laughs> Not for everyone, but there are still tons of fitness experts out there that talk- You need to be incredibly warm and absolutely in your comfort zone for your circulation to work perfectly. And this is such common sense. Talk about polar bear swims and barefoot running. I, on the other hand, am not a fitness expert. Heck, I'm excited if I've managed to carry the heavy groceries in from the car. My quibble today is with the namesake of this channel, the food, the raw organs that he's peddling. That's really where the Liver King's message departs from common fitness practices. It's also where it departs from all food health and safety guidelines and as i'm about to show you it's also where he departs from his own fitness principles so let's just take a look at his diet shall we technically meat is not the only thing he eats as he's also been documented to consume things like protein powder and maple syrup and steroids oops yeah after a year of claiming his body was completely natural that little revelation came out recently it's not very ancestral of you there brian that's his name by the way brian brian johnson don't worry though in a recent video 
he very sincerely apologized for lying to everyone over the last year. You can tell he's sincere because he did it from atop his throne, and also immediately shifted his admission of wrongdoing to a completely unrelated topic. Reminder, this is a guy who started blowing up a year ago. Dude is speed running that online influencer life. He even got that deep sigh that every influencer does. <laughs> Amazing. But okay, the steroid use aside, the majority of his diet is advertised to be raw organ meat. Organ meat is usually not the part of the animal that people find most appetizing. When it comes to chicken, stuff like the liver and heart is part of the giblets that, if you're buying the whole chicken, often come pre-removed in a baggie that most people end up feeding. That's because uh, humans nowadays are generally brainwashed, of course, and uh, most chickens, I would say 99% on Earth, are very toxic and you should not be consuming the organs. And that's why they will taste really bad. But if you get a healthy, wild animal especially, the organs are going to taste delicious, way better than the muscle meat. For example, liver from a wild, healthy animal is insanely delicious. There's really not many more things on Earth that you will ever get to eat that will be as delicious as wild liver. ...to their dog. And that's only if the meat processing facility didn't just chuck it straight into the trash. Because at least in the... Yes, because uh, any meat that goes to meat processing factories is going to be horrible garbage. And uh, really, it should be thrown out. Maybe fed to some animals, that's about it. US, most people don't eat those things at this point in history. Liver and onion, beef, kidney, those used to be prominent across Europe a hundred years ago when people couldn't afford the cuts of meat that we eat now, but aren't considered the tasty... That's absolute nonsense, that's so, that's so incredibly wrong. And the people eat liver still in restaurants a lot today, because he was showing dishes that you would usually serve in restaurants. And uh, they are still quite popular. He's not from Europe, obviously, so he doesn't know it. ...is parts to eat, or the easiest parts to prepare these days. In fact, liver is a notorious punishment food in movies. You drink my medicine, I'll eat your liver. What's liver? We're having liver and cabbage for dinner. Oh my... Yes, liver and cabbage. Hmm, which one of those is not appetizing? Is it the liver or the cabbage? Who actually wants to eat uh, steamed or whatever cooked cabbage? It smells like death. That is, of course, in no way appetizing. You should never mix liver with cabbage or any kind of vegetables anyway. You should generally not eat any vegetables. Also, this is simply a perfect example of how media programs people nowadays. Liver is pretty much the most nutritious food on earth. Of course, it is not comparable to muscle meat. There is no actual argument as to why you should not be eating liver. God, liver and cabbage. A Jewish medieval torch. And if you're a Zoomer who only watches TikTok, well, they hate liver over there too. Eat this liver. It don't smell like doo-doo. Eat this liver. But if anything... Yes, because uh, almost all liver nowadays is very toxic and it smells terrible. And if a child smells toxic liver full of medicine, then of course it's going to be off-putting to them because uh, their natural senses tell them that it is. And far from being relegated to dog food, organ meats are actually extremely dense in nutrients, absolutely packed with vitamins and minerals. Liver in particular is absolutely deserving of being called king of the food world because it's just loaded with iron. To put things in perspective, red meat is- Yeah, because it's loaded with iron. That's why people eat liver. It's not as if they eat because of the vitamin A for the most part. Than B12, 6. It's one of the richest sources of iron, and beef will typically have 2.6 milligrams of iron per 100 grams, while an equal amount of liver would have 17.9 milligrams of iron. It is an S-tier source of iron, which is important when many people suffer from iron deficiencies, leading to anemia, affecting 23% of all people globally. And for young children up to age 5, that number is closer to 40%. And besides iron, liver is also chock full of other nutrients like vitamin A and B vitamins like vitamin B12. So it seems like this one might actually be a point for the liver king. It's a similar story for beef heart, which has 6.4 milligrams of iron per 100 grams. Nowhere near as much as the liver, but still more than twice as high as an equivalent amount of just a regular old cut of beef. And the heart is also packed with the B-complex vitamins, B2, B6, B12, all of which are great for cardiovascular health. Yep, that means much like Mega Man absorbing the powers of his defeated enemies, eating beef heart will cause your heart to become stronger. Pretty much every organ that the liver king names here, pancreas, spleen, kidney, all of them packed full of nutrients, to the point where it really does have you wondering why we waste our times eating boring old muscle tissue all the time. It's even true of the Rocky Mountain oysters that the liver king is so fond of. Why eat vegetables when you can eat testicles? Well, testicles are far from the most appetizing part of the cow, these Montana tender groins are indeed an excellent source of nutrition. While they're roughly similar to regular cow meat in terms of protein content, as well as other nutrients that you'd expect to get from beef, testicles do have a slightly higher amount of potassium, with 100 grams of the stuff in there, offering about as much potassium as a small to medium-sized banana. That's not a euphemism, by the way, I actually do mean banana. So hey, if you can stomach it, go nuts! Badoom ching Boy howdy, that's a winner. So what's the stigma then against all these superfoods? Well, one reason is that your boomer parents probably considered organ meat unhealthy, because they contain a lot of cholesterol. And back in the 1960s, the thinking was that eating
eating cholesterol in your food would lead you to have higher levels of blood cholesterol, which then is linked to heart disease. It seemed like common sense at the time, but just like how a high-fat diet doesn't necessarily lead to a high-fat body, the current scientific consensus on cholesterol is that dietary cholesterol has little to no effect on your blood cholesterol. It turns out that the health experts of the 1960s were wrong. The main reason that the USDA recommends cutting down on high cholesterol foods isn't because of the dietary cholesterol itself, but because high cholesterol foods tend to have high amounts of saturated fat, which would be a problem for those suffering from heart disease. But actually, beef liver and beef heart tend to be leaner. They tend to have less sex. Why would it be a problem for people suffering from heart disease? He doesn't give any explanation. Traded fat than the equivalent amount of beef. So it looks like Liver King is actually ahead of the game on this one. Are there actual hard shortcomings to this diet? Higher cholesterol? It's all rubbish, right? Like the whole the cholesterol idea of thing. track. You buy that cholesterol? Has something to do with heart. So that's two points for the Liver King? Wait, this is still the same guy who doped up, lied about it, profited, and then apologized atop his throne, right? I'm siding with the throne guy? No, no, that's that's not right. But hold on to your ancestral horses there, friends, because the tide's about to turn. Well, it might seem tempting to jump mouth first into the nearest cow liver, there's one problem. Tell him, Gordo. <laughs> There's a reason we don't serve steaks and chicken like sushi. They're likely to carry pathogens like salmonella and dangerous E. coli strains. Ditto for Listeria and Campylobacter. There's just no shortage of bacteria. What exactly is the difference between that and sushi? And uh, again, he doesn't understand what people eat in Europe, but uh, in pretty much every country, you can go to the restaurant and eat steak tartare, which is raw beef, or carpaccio, again, raw beef, uh, raw salmon, uh, sashimi, of course, which comes from Japan. There's also other raw meat dishes, uh, you also get a raw egg when you eat steak tartare. He doesn't understand all of this for some reason. It's not as if this dangerous bacteria is only found on this kind of meat. Of course, it's also found in any kind of fish. Fish are also just meat from the sea. Area that can cause food poisoning. And this is serious business. According to the World Health Organization, 600 million people get food poisoning every year. And of those, around 420,000 die. But Every toxicologist and everybody who knows anything actually scientifically about food poisoning knows that food poisoning comes from poison. There has never been any proof and it has never been linked to bacteria or microbes. And that's exactly what this guy is showing. But scientifically, there's literally zero proof that food poisoning, which is caused by toxins, has something to do with bacteria. That's where the name comes from. Why else? Is it called food poisoning? It would be called bacteria poisoning, micro poisoning. No, it's food poisoning because of poison. And that's why you actually get sick, nauseous, have diarrhea, have to throw up, get fever because your body has to detox from the toxins. Anyway, I made a video about this many years ago. You can check it out about bacteria and food poisoning. Clearly people do eat sushi and carpaccio, raw chopped beef and live to tell the tale. So what's going on with that? While eating raw meat doesn't automatically cause you to get foodborne illnesses, all meat has bacteria living on its surface. So unless there's a really compelling upside to eating meat raw instead of cooked, you're taking a lot of unnecessary risks. There are cultural dishes like carpaccio and Kitfo that definitely there's bacteria on fruit vegetables and a lot of other stuff that people eat uh, <laughs> and uh, funnily enough food poisoning from salmonella that's just what they officially call it not that I believe it comes mostly from spinach for example there's most certainly more cases from spinach than from meat but I don't see him saying that you shouldn't be eating raw salads involve raw meat, and those are primarily eaten as part of special dining experiences. Not every day for three courses, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Liver King eats tons of raw meat, and he sent packages of it to people like Danny Gonzalez from high-end meat suppliers like White Oak Pastures, where even though they purport to have some of the safest and best products in the world, they still cook it all, including the good old Rocky Mountain oysters they send out. And that is talking about a specialty supplier. For the yes, and that's uh, conditioning, and that's exactly what brainwashing is. They just do it. It's not a if if they would eat <laughs> okay i really gotta break this down it's not as if eating flesh from a healthy animal has anything bad in it and that's what meat is a part of an animal if the animal does not have any toxins in it it simply has blood flowing through the veins the arteries and uh, there's all of the nutrients that you need in blood and uh, you have a healthy liver kidneys testicles a healthy brain of course which he should also be mentioning brain is one of the most important things to eat, then what could possibly in this healthy animal cause food poisoning? Nobody would ever be able to answer this because there's nothing. It's simply a healthy animal. You take the piece of meat and you eat it. What are you eating? You're just eating protein and a lot of micronutrients, fat and so on. It's not as if there are toxins in there that can cause food poisoning because bacteria has most certainly never been proven to cause any kind of food poisoning. Therefore, eating a healthy animal 
has never and never will make anybody sick because human beings in nature eat raw meat. This would have never been possible if naturally there would be something in animals that would cause food poisoning. It's just impossible. It doesn't make any sense. The vast majority of people, especially in the US, who go grocery store shopping and not to a specialty butcher shop, it's not going to work like this. They don't have a good sense of whether the meat they buy would be safe to consume raw. And the USDA would back up the claim that it's never safe to consume raw. The USDA... It's generally not safe to eat uh, raw organs from any of those stores. ...lists its guidelines for cooking all beef organs to a minimum temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius and never leaving it undercooked. And that is a good idea for toxic organs because uh, cooking destroys and neutralizes toxins, which is why you can eat uh, garbage meat nowadays uh, cooked. A lot of the muscle meat would also give food poisoning to people if they wouldn't cook it. And in case you think that the USDA is just being stingy, they only actually recommend cooking regular beef to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just medium. The biggest thing here is that the outside surface of the meat, the place where bacteria builds up first and fastest, it needs to get a really strong hot cook. That is why most nice restaurants are able to serve you a rare steak, because they know that they're going to get an incredibly... It's not because it makes any difference as far as food poisoning goes, because the steaks that they serve are not going to cause food poisoning anyway, it's because of regulations. They are simply not allowed to serve a raw steak. That's it. It's just regulations by the government. Hot cook on the outside in order to kill all the most dangerous bacteria. In fact, in an ironic twist, one of the biggest reasons to eat organ meat has historically been that it's economical for your family. Kidneys and livers have historically been much cheaper than muscle beef because it's less tasty and harder to cook. But to get liver and kidneys that you would even consider eating raw, like from white oak pastures, which we know the liver can- It's not actually the history, but it is like that nowadays because it is very toxic and very unappetizing. The way a lot of liver even looks like is already off-putting and when you smell it or taste it, you will right away taste all of the toxins and that's what will give you food poisoning. And trust, you're paying $22 a pound for that beef liver, $14.50 a pound for beef heart, both significantly more expensive than most cuts of beef, including USDA choice T-bones and strip steaks, some of the most desirable meats on the Yes, but it's worth it. What else are you going to spend money on than your health? It's the only thing that you should be spending money on. Market. At the end of the day, these products are not remotely affordable for the vast majority of people. For a solution that he purports is going to solve the world's mental health problems? No, it's just not accessible to the vast majority of the world. So, score is now tied. Then you should be promoting it and working towards making it accessible for most people, if that's what works. And uh, eating raw organ meats would make everybody healthier, would remove depression for the most part. So of course, that's what we should be working towards to no matter how expensive it is, then we gotta make it less expensive simply. But why work towards something else? Whatever he's going to say now. Liver King 2, us too. It's not safe or economical to consume raw meat, but let's just say those aren't factors. Would it be better for you nutritionally if you could eat the meat raw? The answer again is a resounding no. The <laughs> other major reason that humans cook food is, are you ready? There's literally studies, I've even posted them in my videos, I made videos about this. All cooked meat has uh, less nutrients and that's because Cooking simply destroys. There's nothing in any way whatsoever beneficial about cooking any food, not only meat. Cooking simply means supplying heat to your food, which should be alive. And the more you cook it, the more you destroy it, because heat is destructive. But uh, I guess he's not going to mention that, or... I don't know how people don't understand it nowadays. It's such common sense. Heat only destroys. There's no benefits. Humans have evolved for this, you know, from those ancestral heritages that the Liver King keeps talking about. You want to be king of the planet like the Liver King? Cook your food. That's what our homo sapien grandparents did to get ahead of all the other species out there. It's what set us apart from all the other animal species on Earth. Author Polly Shulman, writing for the American Museum of Natural History, puts it like this. Compared to chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, we have, quote, puny digestive systems. We have smaller teeth, weaker chewing muscles, and shorter gastrointestinal tracts. Those shorter... Kind of hard to compare modern humans to the way we are in nature. Gastrointestinal tracts matter a lot, since that means less opportunity to extract nutrients from our food. And you see, that becomes a problem because compared to the adult chimp, the adult human needs about 400 more calories every day. That's because we have bigger bodies and bigger brains. How is it then that we humans with our bigger energy needs are able to get away with having weaker and shorter digestive systems? Well, it's because we pre-digest our food. I don't know what he means by weaker, but uh, we have shorter intestines, for example, because we don't eat plant matter and don't ferment plants in our long intestine. This is absolute common sense in biology. Why does he talk about it? 
as if uh, it's some huge discovery. <laughs> it's really ignorant. Using tools. Instead of relying on strong teeth and strong jaws to chew our food, we rely instead on our strong brains to digest that food before it ever enters our body. We Is he saying that applying heat destruction to food digests it? In what way does it digest it? I've heard people say this before and I've never heard any kind of explanation. What about it? actually digests it, literally. <laughs> There's no explanation. Use tools to crush, cut, grind food into smaller bits before it ever enters our mouth. And most critically, we cook our food. The proteins in uncooked meat have intermolecular bonds that are tough to break, because when you think about it, raw meat is just whole muscle. It's tough stuff. Cooking the meat, though, denatures. Incredibly ignorant. Everybody who eats raw meat knows that uh, raw meat is super soft and cooked meat is always tougher. The more you cook meat, the tougher it gets until it becomes charcoal. But if you eat a well done steak and you compare it to a raw steak, you know that a raw steak just falls apart. It sometimes almost melts in your mouth. Whereas a cooked steak, especially a well done steak, you gotta chew, chew, chew. It gets stuck between your teeth and so on because it's super dry and tough. It's just such common sense. Sure, those proteins. It changes them into a form that allows the enzymes in our digestive system to actually get at the proteins and break them down so our body can use them. We don't lose nutrition when we cook our meat. We actually make much more of it accessible to our body. Oh my God, oh my God. There's many studies proving that over 90% of B12 is destroyed in meat. 35% of vitamin D, I believe, one study was saying, it's all out there, it's so easily to access, and he's literally lying to his audience that you don't lose nutrients? You always lose nutrients when you cook meat, always. Like, what? <laughs> no matter how you cook it, it's only destructive. Bodies more easily. And what about all those valuable vitamins and minerals in the organ meat? Well, they're still there too when you cook it. Iron in liver isn't gonna magically change into some other element just because you heat. Minerals are more stable, and yes, for the most part, the iron is going to be there. That's all cool. But what about the micronutrient vitamin deficiencies that you're going to get by eating cooked meat? This happens all the time. A lot of people who eat cooked meat still have a B12 deficiency, just like a vegan. Eated it a little bit. You want concrete proof of that? One reason people don't like liver is that it's easy to overcook, meaning it dries out in the pan. The concentration of all the minerals inside becomes higher, bringing out the unpleasant irony flavor. Pretty much nobody likes cooked liver if they compare it to raw liver. Once somebody tries raw liver, they understand that cooked liver is really almost disgusting compared to it. Liver because there's so much of it in a small piece of meat. That said, cooking the liver ahead of time means that our digestive juices have to do less work to pull nutrients from food, which is why we can get away with having smaller... Where's the explanation for this absolutely ridiculous lie? digestive systems compared to animals. Liver King likes to tout the ancestral lifestyle, but our human ancestors relied on fire for cooking and tools for cutting and... No, we never relied on that, and there's still tons of tribes out there, communities in Ethiopia, people in Japan who eat uh, predominantly raw meat. And they used to eat completely raw meat, but nowadays, of course, you have society and all of the programming, and that's why people were simply brainwashed to start cooking their meat more and more. And you can see that the most brainwashed societies such as uh, Europe and uh, the US, Australia, cook their meat a lot. It really says everything when you look at the least and most brainwashed societies and what they eat. The most important point here is if you believe in evolution, which he obviously does, he believes that we used to be chimpanzees, which makes absolute sense. It's not as if that's one of the most retarded things you could possibly believe. No, no, no. We evolved by eating food that has less nutrients, yes. We cooked our food, applied destructive heat to it, destroyed cholesterol, vitamin D, B12, which the brain is made out of, and that's what made our brains grow. Yes, food that has less nutrients made our brains grow. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. <laughs> it's not as if that's absolute proof that your brain has actually experienced shrinkage. No, 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 it has grown, and that's why you cannot even comprehend something so absolutely simple. Grinding as a way of pre-digesting the food. Our ability to use tools is what sets us apart from other animals. It's why humans are weaker than chimps when it comes to raw strength. Ultimately, we beat chimps. 
It is true about the tools, but we use tools as weapons. Uh, our biggest weapon is our brain. Evolutionarily, Liver King seems to think that eating raw meat is paying homage to our human ancestors. But it's our brain and our stovetop, not our biceps, that make us the winning species. So eating raw meat? Well, that's the exact sort of subprimal behavior that he makes fun of in front of his audience. And if that weren't enough of a theory, a food theory, well, I'm pretty sure he knows all of this. Like many an internet charlatan before him, he's selling an aspirational brand, not science. I get a lot of DMs, a lot of comments. I was living in a mansion. How's flying a private jet? How's having a wakeboarding boat? How's having all this stuff? How's this ancestral? You can be a subprimal and sit on the couch and let life happen to you, or you can be the evolutionary hunter that leaves the comfort of the cave and creates and shapes a better life and moves from that tiny cave to a big, better, more luxurious cave. The guy that creates the wheel, the evolutionary hunter that evolves that into the engine, into the vehicle, into the plane, and then flying private, creating a better life. What he's saying is not completely wrong, of course, but the problem is that he lied about how he got to that point and the. Uh... He got there by scamming everybody. Saving a better life. This is what he's selling. Success. There's no science in that quote. There's confidence and wealth. And that is what all of this is really about. For a guy whose tenets involve connecting with the earth, he's very willing to fly off in private jets. And in fact, this quote redefines ancestral living as going on far off adventures, living in mansions, not exactly bringing Flintstones level realness over there. At the end of the day, the liver king, for all his ancestral tenets, isn't really living ancestrally. He's projecting a very specific image and then selling the feeling of being powerful and primal to men, mostly young men who he identifies as depressed and underconfident. And people are suffering today with depression, with anxiety. They got low ambition in life. What I'm proposing, my thesis is that there's a simple, elegant solution to living a gosh darn kick butt living life. He's happy to charge him $48 for a two month supply of supplements from a company he owns. I do have three companies that make $100 million a year. Well, he flies around the world doing meat related stunts, because that's all they are, stunts. And while we've shown that he may be completely wrong about the raw meat from a health perspective, nutrition perspective, and even historic perspective. You really didn't show anything at all about the health perspective. You simply said that there there's bacteria on it which causes food poisoning, which there's literally no proof of anywhere in the scientific realm. Just nothing whatsoever. <laughs> and it's funny, he didn't even try to present any proof, he just said it, that's it. You're just supposed to religiously, blindly believe him. The nutrition perspective, uh, you didn't give any proof again, you just said that there's just as many nutrients, even though every study shows that cooking food destroys nutrients. And the historic perspective, yeah, whatever. Perspective. In the end here, there is one thing and one thing only that shall always remain king. Science. Instead of following the private jets, massive pecs, and testicle bites, follow the research and decide for yourself. But hey, that's j Why did you not present any kind of research, any kind of study whatsoever in this video? Just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> Alright, I guess I shouldn't have expected anything from this video, but I did expect more. There was just nothing, there was nothing even that I really had to debunk because they didn't present any proof for their claims whatsoever. There was no science, no research, no studies of any kind showing that raw meat is in any way dangerous, that bacteria is dangerous, that cooked meat is somehow superior or that it's pre-digested, which uh, literally none of these people can even explain. They don't even understand themselves what they mean, what they're talking about. It's all always just a religious and blind belief and you gotta follow this belief because otherwise your whole so-called world crumbles. It's your everyday life, it's what your life is based on. That's why you cook food every day because you just blindly believe that you have to or you wash uh, the surface uh, of the stove because you believe that there's going to be dangerous bacteria left over or uh, there's uh, unicorns flying around infecting everybody and so on. <laughs> All right guys, thanks for watching.